Man, I do think too, just moving forward in the YouTube space, there's so much excitement around this style as well. Yes. Someone like Flurf Designs, his video called The Disneyfication of American Cities, I believe it's called, is right. approaching 500,000 views. Yeah. I mean, like, amazing. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman, and that is Michael Pasternak, video producer for the Strong Towns organization. Uh, Mike and I talk a little bit about his journey to video production, as well as the Strong Towns movement. Uh, it is a good one, so let's get right to it with Mike. Michael Pasternak, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Hey, happy to be here. Hey, Mike, I love giving my uh, guests an opportunity just to introduce themselves. So who is Mike? Uh, that's, I feel like that's a good question. I am just like a Midwest stan. I love living in the Midwest. I grew up here, grew up outside of Chicago, uh, found my way back after going to school at the University of Missouri. I was a high school teacher for three years. During that time, I filmed weddings. And uh, my wife and I, uh, girlfriend at the time, were like, you know, exploring this idea of, of filming weddings as, as a job, as a business. And so when over the summers I was making more doing that than I was teaching, we decided to just send it. And so in our first couple of years of marriage, that was it. We were wedding filmmakers and we decided to move to Phoenix, Arizona to film weddings year round. And in that time, I found City Nerd, I found Not Just Bikes, and I got really into this idea of living in a place that felt more human, that uh, was a lifestyle that encouraged community, that encouraged, you know, getting outside of the boxes that we we isolate ourselves in. And so we ended up coming back to Chicago because it felt like a good fit for us being close to family. And at the same time, there was a job opportunity for Strong Towns to be the YouTube uh, or to, to run the YouTube channel and my experience wedding filmmaking, as well as a really weird, but fun stint in Arizona when I worked for a couple prankster YouTubers, uh, for, for like four or five months that gave me the, the weird, like niche experience that I was like, let's give it a go. And so when I applied for the strong towns job, I made a video because I love our hiring process. It's all about skills. And they had us make videos and I made a video that I wanted to make, just something I thought was cool and interesting. And it was exactly what they were looking for. So that's how I found my way to Strong Towns. Not just like making videos, but also the mindset and ideas that Strong Towns is all about. So I love it. I love it. And uh, I went ahead and, and brought up the graphic uh, here on screen of the landing page of the YouTube channel. And uh, <laughs> I, I had to smile, uh, too, because I, I, I love the, the little uh, landing page photo with Ed Erfurt there uh, leading the, 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 the it looks like he's got little ducklings following him. There. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic and fascinating. So uh, going back to that YouTube channel uh, or channels that you were helping, uh, it, it's funny that the way you phrased it, you know, it, it's so what what sort of platform or what sort of genre was that in uh, that, you know, kind of gave you the, the, you know, the experience in what becomes viral and what becomes successful out on YouTube? Mm. Yeah, I, to be honest, prior to working with Big Dogs TV and uh, Stephen Shapiro, both pranksters who live out in Phoenix, Arizona, which is a really funny spot because that's also where that was epic is uh, Juan. And like those are the three biggest people, I think, in in like pranking. And like before working for them, I had no idea. I, I had ideas just how, how any of us do from the outside of what makes something like worth watching, what gets people's attention. But when I applied for that job, I was just a little burnt out from weddings, looking for something interesting and different. And I'd been watching their prank videos since like, you know, 2013 when I was in, in high school and I hadn't kept up much with their stuff, but I always thought big Dawes was a cool guy. So yeah. getting that job was, was 
a really cool, strange fever dream because the team was amazing. The people I was working with were so talented in this really specific niche of just getting eyes on stuff, getting clicks. The business model behind it was sustainable. And it was cool seeing how Dawson and Steven built a life for themselves doing what they loved, which is just like having fun interactions, messing with people and the way they really push the envelope. They don't get a lot of respect in the YouTube world. You know, you see people like Colin and Samir who are YouTube journalists, uh, if you if for those who don't know who they are, and they found their own little niche of explaining YouTube to people on YouTube and talking about not just the current events, but the strategies involved. And there's channels like Think Media, people who like show you how to do YouTube, but that's not what Colin and Samir do. They talk about like the the new wave of creators. They really get into the sort of subculture as opposed to just like, how do you go viral? And I haven't seen a lot of prankster stuff on there. And that was a huge part of YouTube in like 2012 to 2015. That that like was YouTube. So aside from that, I really enjoyed working for them because getting to see like under the hood of what makes a video succeed, seeing the strategies of trying different thumbnails, the very particular titles, the way that they did shorts and their really efficient method of taking these longer clips. And like I could edit three or four videos in a day. It was, right. yeah. it was a system and it was really cool. <laughs> I will say like, I, I was kind of like a, uh, a fish out of water in, in that like, uh, arena, I guess of, of content. So I don't think I was maybe the best like personality fit when it comes to like pranking and all of that. But really I just, loved getting to see the talent and strategy of like those really creative people and just the team behind them, like Grayson Golba. He's awesome. Um, Morningstar Takapu and, and Ari Labodi, just really, really talented guys all running that, that team. And so they all taught me the language of YouTube, which was, which was really fun. And I got to go on some really like crazy trips and see some of the funniest interactions I've seen in my life. And that really prepared me to be able to like talk on camera in a way that I'm, I'm used to presenting. I was a teacher. I know how to package and present ideas, but at the same time, it does feel weird walking around in public. Like, uh, you'll see in a few of my videos, like I go and I put a camera somewhere and I step back and I talk to it. And that was an uncomfortable thing. Like vlogging is not something that I, I ever would have thought of doing before because I feel like I'm like hyper social aware sometimes, but working with those guys and just their complete, just like goofiness and ability to just be like, like crazy in public, like actually helped me get to that stage of being like, nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a really fun and interesting stint. And I truly nothing but like respect and, and they honestly, they deserve more respect, but it was just, it was a really fun time. And I yeah, really yeah. like those guys. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned, uh, our, our, our good friends, uh, you know, Ray with, with city nerd, here's his, his YouTube landing page. Uh, and, uh, he was recently here on, on the podcast, uh, as well. And Ray, of course, uh, served, was sitting right next to me, served on a panel uh, that you moderated uh, with the Strong Towns National Gathering last year in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you very much for uh, doing that. And it was an honor to be uh, sitting next to, to Ray and, and giving that getting that opportunity. I too had been following his work for, for many, many years. And, and so it was a delight to be able to, you know, spend a little bit of time sitting right next to him and learning a little bit about his process and his background. Uh, and then having him on the podcast gave me, you know, even more so, you know, and it's, it's one of the things I love doing on these conversations is giving some of these creators an opportunity to share a little bit about themselves and a little about their history. So I really appreciate you, you doing this. And I appreciate too, the fact that your story, your, you know, really, 
the the origin story of how you came to doing this, uh, it, it's funny that it includes both Ray and Jason. And of course, you know, what's really, really cool about you know, Jason's story, uh, you know, with not just bikes is then, you know, how that maturation took place uh, after he and his wife and, and, and kids moved to, to the Netherlands and moved to Amsterdam. And then he too sort of found Strong Towns and started producing an entire series about Strong Towns. And now the Strodes video is sitting right at the top at 6.9 million views, two years going. Talk a little bit about that because I mean, you were a teacher and then you were a wedding, you know, pro- you know, video producer and then doing stuff, you know, helping produce stuff on, on YouTube. But then you drunk, you, you drank some of the Kool-Aid of urbanism. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit about that, man. Yeah. Um, I think exact timeline of all of this was on the plane to phoenix on the way back from uh one of the weddings we were filming because a lot of our clientele was still in missouri i was reading strong towns and as we flew into the city and i like looked over like phoenix is a great place but (laughs) as i looked over just like there's an iconic picture of from the reservation and the line between uh that and scottsdale and just like sprawl right and as as we flew in i was like reading strong towns and it just clicked and i was like oh so for context we had two cars at the time uh we had tried to do one car and we ended up getting like a minivan that we could go camping in because phoenix is like the trailhead of the west it's just a great spot to launch into different places for outdoor adventures which is why we moved there for sunshine and for clients year round but also we thought that was a good lifestyle fit that car broke down and having to live with one car in a place that makes it extremely like inhospitable to do so combined with reading strong towns, finding Jason's videos and uh, Jason's videos are the ones that convinced me, I think first to read the book though, the YouTube algorithm just kind of throws stuff at you. So I don't have an exact timeline. It just, it started like, drip feeding me like city beautiful and then i watched you know a couple of those and i was like i don't i'm not an expert enough to learn about this and then there was one about like like jason just does such a good job of really getting to the heart of why we are discontent discontented why we're discontented with our environment and his stuff is absolutely crucial to to the work we do because unless people see why things are wrong like unless you know we we like remove like our blinders it's we can just keep going and pretend that all of this stuff is normal but it's not and i I mean you like you have the the map of of phoenix up there the thing that was weird to me about phoenix was growing up in like chicago land like west chicago suburbs they all have a different feeling. You can go to an Elmhurst where I grew up and it feels different than going to like Alliance and it feels different than the Northwest suburbs like Barrington. It feels different than the Southwest suburbs and the South suburbs. You get close to Oak Park and it feels way different than going out to Batavia. And they all have this unique personality. But in Phoenix, there was a kind of like sameness to a lot of it. And if you want what it offers, Phoenix is amazing. But the thing that is was hard for me is like a surprise feels the same as like a Queen Creek. And a like Gilbert has its own vibe, but we got priced the heck out of there. Like homes were going for like 650. And yeah, that's right. You know, it's an expensive place to live. Yep. And I don't know, there was a not having the seasons was a big one for us where this sameness combined with, uh, I mean, the weather was fantastic, but there was a kind of like weird feeling that it, it felt, I don't know how to describe it. It just felt the same. And what you did actually, what was crazy is right before we decided to, to like move back to, to Chicago or Molly had not lived in Chicago, but moved back to Chicago. We, 
we're living in like uh, just north of Tempe Town Lake. If you want to zoom in near like Tempe Town Lake, we were living right by there. Um, and we would go to just north of there. There's the Scottsdale Greenbelt. We go on a walk every day and we had to drive to go for a walk. It was weird. And then there was this cool concept called cul-de-sac that was popping up. And I love your new videos. Thank you. There was a cool concept called cul-de-sac popping up. If we were going to stay in Phoenix, there is so much cool stuff happening in Mesa and Tempe. And I don't want to turn this into the classic, just like let's talk about specific locations because a lot of people can't relate. Most people can't relate. But if you're looking at this map, there's just so much potential in this little corridor between uh, Mesa and Tempe. And Mesa, if you're not familiar with Arizona, gets a, a bad rap. A lot of people associate it with not being like the nicest place, but it's like such a sleeper suburb. Like no one is, no one is prepared for the like rise of Mesa that's about to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. So we were talking about uh, cul-de-sac and uh, I pulled up their mm -hmm. website here. And so uh, you had mentioned before we hit resume that you guys <laughs> yeah. were thinking about maybe cul-de-sac, maybe moving there. But the timing was yeah. quite right. It's funny because people from the outside look at the price of cul-de-sac, which at the time it was like fourteen hundred for like a one bedroom. Um, I think it's a little more now. That's not crazy for Scottsdale. That's actually very cheap for Tempe and Scottsdale. Um, and the fact that there was this opportunity to live a, like the, the bummer was there, you kind of have to be car free. I don't know if they still have like a covenant thing that you have to sign. That's like, I don't do. have a car yes. that I'm going to park here. That yeah. was the major thing that we couldn't do because we could do car light. We, we can do like using our car occasionally, but we were not in a position to, especially with our business at the time, sell our car. So, uh, we now live a very car light lifestyle uh, until it gets, I mean, in the summertime, we barely use the car. It's, you know, it was zero degrees last week. So we took it a couple of times when we would have walked. But yeah, but aside yeah. from that, it's like definitely that was the one thing that that kept us. But it's really cool. And I, I really want to check it out. And I love your videos because there was a point where at the end, Ryan said, uh, it's Ryan. Yes. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan Johnson, said, yeah. um, you know, we're not the ones that are bringing this lifestyle and this walkability to places. It, the, the model doesn't work that way. The way it works is like you lay the groundwork and you get the stuff moving. And if there's a culture there where we're ready to then come in and like help be part of this, that's the goal. The goal is not like we are going to be the ones who are going to make this place. Well, they chose Tempe because it's a college campus or there's a college campus nearby it's right on the phoenix metro it is the perfect spot and there's plenty of places that if they just had the right with the right environment where that kind of development might work super well so anyway it was phoenix was a was a fun little journey but we we love chicago i i love being back uh back home so yeah yeah that's the, it's a fascinating story um and, and fascinating that you should mention Elmhurst. Uh, when I lived in the Chicagoland area, I lived in Elmhurst uh, Dude, for no like way. six months. <laughs> and I think earlier Loved I mentioned it. Clinton Avenue. And now that I think of it, I think it was Clinton Avenue in Elmhurst where I was Wild. living. <laughs> so it was, it was great because... It's a movie I, town. I was just going to say, and it's funny that you used to say it's a, a movie town. It was actually because I had moved there from... Uh, Orange County, California. So I was, you know, sort of, uh, I was in the Brea area. My office was down in Am Anaheim, right near where uh, Disneyland is. And uh, so when I made that move to Elmhurst, um, I was just like, oh, wow, this is so cool. I could walk, you know, a few blocks into the the cute little downtown area. So it was one of my, my first tastes as a young professional. At the time I, I was working, I was the, the wellness program coordinator for Motorola out in Schaumburg at the world headquarters campuses. And so I was uh, making that commute uh, from uh, Elmhurst down to Schaumburg. And then, um, and, and then when I moved to the lakefront, then I was doing the reverse commute from the lakefront out to Schaumburg. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, we can talk a little bit that. about that in a, in, a, in a moment because the urbanism, uh, you know, aspect of from Elmhurst out to Chicago is a bit different. The Elmhurst uh, uh, experience for me was a, was a little familiar because it was like what it was like, uh, you know, kind of growing up in Lincoln, California, where you had this sort of town feel, small community feel. And you could, you know, walk a few blocks to school or you could get to the prairie path and go for a run. Uh, oh, you know, it path. was just, yeah, the prairie <laughs> yeah. path, a beloved activity <laughs> asset for sure, mm-hmm. you know, uh, of that area. But yeah, that, that, that's fascinating too. For me as a young professional, as a young adult, it gave me that opportunity to be reminded what that sort of smaller city, small town kind of urbanism was like, and that concept of what well, we wouldn't drive to get to the fitness center, the rec center or to downtown. I mean, we just walk a few blocks. Yeah. Like the option just, it's, it's a grid. And what's interesting about a lot of the Chicago suburbs is they are essentially, they have a train station in the middle of town. And a lot of people use that train to commute in, into work, but also like as a high school kid, I could go to like Lollapalooza by taking the train. You know, you can get to a Cubs game by taking the train. If we, I mean, the cultural, the cultural amenities of Chicago are amazing and it's great to have access to that. But even within Elmhurst, I walked to every single school I went to. I walked to elementary school, middle school, and high school. And my family moved throughout town a few times. The bummer with Elmhurst is it's losing the sort of accessibility that used to be there of being able to get the two bedroom cottage as the, like the starter home. Those don't really exist in Elmhurst as much anymore. Those are seen as teardowns and it's becoming a much wealthier suburb, but uh, it was that the tight grid and the ability as a kid to just get to all my friends' houses easily, all the parks and amenities. It was just, I want to do a video about Elmhurst and I want them to enter into the strong towns competition, but I, I don't live there. So I can't be like the advocate for it, but truly there's so much good. Like uh, there's, there's, there's so many places that have a fantastic foundation here. And what's interesting, I, this, I'm going to sort of pull a 180 here, but this reminds me of in a lot of places, the concept of, there's a joke. I don't know where it's from, but whenever you go to a new place, it's like, should I move here? Right. And in traveling to many of the places, cause I saw the, and speaking of strongest town contest in the many places that I, I visited, it's interesting that having that sort of gut check of like, what is this place like? Would I want to live here? And it's, it's funny because my wife always like, <laughs> gets frustrated when I come back from a place and I'm like, we should move here. And the sort of the recent video that, um, I made is a kind of, it's a kind of a letter to myself as much as it's a, it's a, a a video for other people that like moving somewhere else is certainly an option. Like that is something that we did. We moved to Chicago and we're going to move again at some point, likely going to be in Chicago land, but It's, there's this mindset that because, you know, you watch one of Jason's videos and you feel this discontent and you feel frustrated about this environment, that moving will fix that. And speaking of Phoenix, like we have friends who are very into strong towns, urbanism, all that. And they moved to Mesa for that reason. They, they said like, we like this area and we think that our best bet for urbanism in the future and affordability is going to be living near downtown Mesa or living near Tempe and fighting for the kind of development that we want in our place. So for me, like this video was, it's the first video I ever made for Strong Towns was, yeah, it was fine. It was a little bit preachy, but I think this is a culmination of me finding my tone of like, I want to highlight the stories of people who are, who know they're not going to move and who are fighting for the places they live. Like, would I love to live in Amsterdam? Absolutely. But I'm monolingual. I am not in a career that is like in high demand. And I love, I love my family and I love the Midwest. And there are things that I would love to change, 
So I'm going to change, I'm going to fight to change them. Right. And I think there, there is a lot of hopelessness and a lot of people misplace that hopelessness on someone like Jason. Right. They, they, they say like, he is the reason why like people are defeatist or like feel this way. And it's like, no, it was always there. And we have always been prone to complain instead of do something. But like Jason isn't complaining. He is advocating for the life changes that he made. Right. And in the same way, like strong towns, it's hard. It's hard to like fight for change. It's hard to show up to the meetings in the same way that John John from Chattanooga Urbanist Society shows up for Chattanooga like time and time again. But those are the people who make our places what we want them to be. Like, I don't know. I just, that's the thing I love about what I get to do. And my favorite videos I've made are the ones where I get to speak to the people doing that. Like Fayetteville, the second video I ever made is probably my favorite one. And I honestly get emotional watching that video. Yeah, it's great. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's, it was, some of these videos are like love letters to these places. They are like being able to elevate these people who are like, quietly making making their cities better for their kids like that is really inspiring to me because i do have the tendency like many of us do to like have this escapist mentality yeah and so there are so many comments on the fix it or move video where people are like well screw you i'm moving anyway and it's like great are you like if you are congrats but if you're just saying, if if you have it in your mind that you are going to move and you never do it, like that is torture. You're torturing yourself. Right, right. Yeah. You know, like once the veil's been lifted and we've been, say, like orange pilled. Yeah. Like you're presented with a choice. Like, are you going to do something about it? Or are you going to be like miserable for a long time? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I would... What do you, you, you live in Austin, a city that has so much upside, but also that like is, is tough. I'm sure living in knowing what you know with its design, like how do you feel about, I mean, say the work you do and highlighting the, the little victories say that keep us going when, when we wish we could sometimes copy paste (laughs) <laughs> Some yeah, of the good yeah. stuff here. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we've, we really intentionally made sure that when we made the move and we made the move from Hawaii, from, from the big Island of Hawaii, we've we lived uh, just outside a little village uh, called uh, Waimea, also known as Camuela on the big Island. Uh, so when we moved here, we made, we were very intentional about making sure that we were in a neighborhood where we could reduce down to one car and for the most part, we wouldn't even have to drive on a weekly basis, a daily basis. We could be able to get to meet our daily needs by walking and biking. Uh, and so that's what we've done. We were obviously, admittedly, coming from a certain sense of privilege to be able to do that because it doesn't come cheap to be able to do that. But we were very, very intentional about not wanting to live a car dependency lifestyle, which can be very easy to do when you move to a city that is 326 square miles. I mean, you know, it's just a massive, sprawling place. But at the same time, where we're at, we've got good bones. We're very, very close to downtown um, and we're very, very close to a network of activity assets, uh, protected bike lanes and pathways and the ability and parks and pools. You know, we're, we're very, very well situated. And I think that makes a, a, a huge difference in, in, you know, I'm looking at this one uh, video that you have here. The small town is surprisingly urban and sometimes even big metropolitan, metropolitan areas can be surprisingly walkable and bikeable in different portions of it, even though they have a, a sprawling metro. Like when you look at Chicagoland, I mean, it, it's a massive sprawling place with its sprawling, you know, westward all the way to to elmhurst you got uh, your but, romeovilles you know yeah exactly <laughs> and, and 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 you know and many people end up you know 
being pushed all the way out to like Naperville. Uh, you know, just like here, you know, people get pushed, you know, further and further out to yeah. be able to quote unquote drive to your qualify, um, and, yeah. you know, perpetuating <laughs> that, that challenge that we have. I want to talk a little bit about the success of the channel. Now you've been with strong towns now for just over a year, correct? Yeah. Fantastic. Congratulations. And when I look at the most popular videos of all time, uh, we still oh, have- Oh man, the, I can't the, wait to beat Chuck's first <laughs> video from 13 years ago. <laughs> you're so and you're close, you're close. You know, you, it, the, 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 and of course, I, I'm continuing to, to push more people to that conversation of an engineer because <laughs> it keeps coming up in conversations. Um, so but funny. yeah, the, that, that's a classic and that only represents a small fraction of the total number of views of that particular video. But yeah, that's 13 years ago. The, the film that you have that's literally shot up, it's only been out for two months, is this was a mistake. Talk a little bit about that because, you know, you must have been like, holy moly, this thing is taking off. It's caught fire. There's got to be a certain level of satisfaction, you know, when you're you know, like producing these things. It's, you had just passed the one year anniversary uh, when you put this this uh, video out. And, you know, I'm also going to solo you out for a second because, yeah, right behind you there is that uh, oh, wonderful yeah. plaque uh, <laughs> representing a uh, hundred uh, thousand subscribers. You guys just passed the hundred thousand su subscriber mark. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, it had to be a little bit of a validation of uh, that move that you made uh, to be able to have this thing take off uh, just after a year. When I first joined Strong Towns and we had our first retreat, so we're a completely remote organization, but we do have uh, like two or three retreats a year where we get to see each other. And Chuck and I were just chatting and, um, he was like, what are your goals this year? And I was like, I want to hit 100,000 subs. Like I want that plaque. I know we can do it. And it's a big goal and it's a risky goal, especially to set sites that high. Uh, and like, I mean, you've been grinding for a long time and like, you know, it's not always easy success. So it was a bold statement to say, you know, I want to hit a hundred thousand. Do you um, remember where you, where you were at? Uh, we were -wise? right around 30, okay. uh, right around 30. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there was, that's the thing is there was a, an audience primed and ready to go. And I was like, if we just apply what I think is going to work, it is going to fail spectacularly or do very well. And <laughs> at this point, especially in my career path, I had nothing to lose. You know, I was like, if there is one, I had sworn off video. I was like actually looking for jobs outside of video before I took the job with Strong Towns because I was like, this has been fun and maybe I need to give up on this dream of using what I'm good at and love to do. Well, you had mentioned it uh, earlier. You, you you felt like you were a little burned out on the wed yeah. wedding video production. So I, I suspect that that might have been some of it, right? It was. And I just, I was like, this has been fun, but I don't know that this is the, I don't know that there's a, a any kind of job that will fit what I, there has to be a unicorn job. And so the, when the Strong Times one came up and that opportunity, I was like, shoot, this is it. <laughs> so that video and many of the videos that I have uh, I have made have been tweaking that process of of making the kind of explainer uh, inspired by a say Johnny Harris, Cleo Abrams. Uh, though recently my inspiration has been a little more toward oh shoot I'm I'm totally spacing Answer in Progress, the Canadian YouTube channel. Uh, they have been really inspiring to me recently. They're humble and inquisitive tone is one that I really want to capture more. But anyway, just applying the structure of filming a kind of doc, showing in a visually engaging way, having that process, one that Film Booth talks about of making a promise that you're going to answer something and then answering that promise over and over again, presenting questions and presenting an answer to that question and having that storyline, like that approach has worked really well for us. But 
really the one that surprised me the most is the one you're talking about. I did not love this video, the one that you have on screen right now. I I thought it was fine. <laughs> and it really surprises me in the way that it, it always does. The ones that I put so much effort into, like the last one, not doing great. But the one that like we're looking at of uh, this experiment, uh, like Undid Our Cities, I think is the name. Right. Or no, this is a different one. What's the name of this one again? So this was this experiment undid our cities. Yeah. How, um, how to fix it. Yeah. It was cool because I got to highlight Chicago as well. Yeah. It's, it's just wild the way that sometimes people resonate with ones that you like don't resonate as much with. I so, think that's an important <laughs> lesson for, for us content creators too, is that yeah. we have to be careful not to get too in love with and attached to that particular thing. It may be our personal favorites that, Hey, this was yeah. fun to make, but we don't yeah. know what's going to really resonate and really tickle that algorithm just right. And process wise, this video started as something way different and it's the last of a dying breed of the kind of videos, uh, where they're kind of impromptu. <laughs> Uh, they're going to be a lot more structured moving forward, which I'd love to talk about our new structure. Um, but this video was originally based on the idea of, um, I think it's Stuart Brand uh, and the architect and like form following function. And I wanted to make a video about how Chicago's bones and the form of these buildings, specifically the duplex and the three flats or the two flat and three flat, as well as the courtyard apartment, how these structures are what allowed Chicago, Chicago to become what it did because they fit the needs of certain people at a certain time. And there's an element of that in this video, but it started as a complete architectural video and turned into more of an incremental development video, which I thought was really cool. Like that, I did not expect that to happen, but um, as the video started coming together and I started going down all these useless rabbit holes and I was deep into the Chicago building code, <laughs> like it, it ended up turning into something that was more about like the, the way we build as opposed to the structure of the things we build. So, um, really fun video and I'm really glad it did as well as it did. Um, but the real surprising thing to me, not surprising, the real affirming thing was hitting 100,000 subscribers. It showed that this is not just a, it's not just a like Chuck movement. It's not just a, you know, a cult of personality, strong towns. Like we, there is depth to Chuck's ideas. There is real like substance there and people are hungry for success stories. And they're hungry to be told that like, to be pushed to do that next smallest thing. And I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Like you, like we talked about my favorite videos are the ones where I get to lift people up. And sometimes my least favorite ones are the ones that do well. The one that surprised me most, if you scroll down a little bit yeah, is the, this Ponzi scheme might end <laughs> a click baby uh, up with the, like, the river of oh this one here yeah the, the financial <laughs> yeah the financial disaster that one. one I like oh I I do not like that one that much and it, the fact that it did as well as it did like yes, almost three hundred thousand yeah like yeah. it's so funny to me like it of all the effort I there is so much more effort put into like the our parking lots ruining your city video. Right. And I think it's more compelling, but our yeah. audience feels otherwise, you know? Yeah. It's some, sometimes you gotta, you gotta hit with the negativity, but that video is so funny to me. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, cause it is one of the interesting things on social media in general is that, and Chuck and I have had this discussion before too, is that if you put something out there that has either snarkiness in it or some negativity to it, it just gets more clicks and gets more uh, eyeballs. And, and it's, it's really unfortunate when, you know, you're, you're trying to do what I'm doing uh, with Active Towns, trying to actually profile positive stories that are having, you know, that are taking place. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
maybe financial disaster, you know, on that thumbnail, you know, and the Ponzi scheme, you know, maybe that's all of of it. Boom. Clickbaity for sure. It is weird. Uh, Like to what point, how much do you lean into the clickbait and how much do you not? And I think we found a balance that feels fair and honest where I never want to lie in any of what we tell. And that's been a real tension I've had, especially moving with our future approach is there's this sort of like feels like a rubber band on both ends where if I'm going to do any kind of scripted anything, it feels disingenuous to me to pretend that I just found this thing. Right. And answer in progress does this so well, because I know it's not all just impromptu, like, oh, I found this thing and I happen to have a camera on me right as I find it. But they present it in a way that I think is, is honest to their expertise. Because I am not an expert in urbanism. I have honed the ability to, I think, present ideas in a way that is engaging. But I think I often come across as a know-it-all or a, as preachy in the way I present our message. And that's the thing that was so interesting about inheriting the Strong Towns channel from where it was, is I didn't need to, and our team is awesome at like affirming this, but like I didn't need to have the expertise as much as we have a whole like chest of gold for me to pull from. Just really great stuff, great experts, and I can highlight the people who have done all of this research and who whose stuff I can lean on. But me not having the degree, uh, not like I want to make sure I'm not presenting myself as the expert as much as presenting myself as the discoverer of what the experts have found. And that's why my docs are my favorite ones because they feel the most honest because all my docs, I do find stuff while I'm there that I did not predict like I found that, like, for example, the the most beautiful one to me is that Arkansas film, the Fayetteville one about parking lots, because Matthew Petty is awesome. He is so cool. And meeting him and just feeling, I felt his frustration. He's been doing this for what, like 20 years? He's been fighting for this for at least on city council for at least 10 And I could feel when he was talking, I could hear his frustration. And like, it was the same frustration I had. So when I got to find that old clip of him talking about Strong Town's ideas back in 2014, and then play the clip of him talking now and put them both together, like that is something that like, I know I found and that feels authentic and real on the, the emotional aspect. And the hard thing for me is finding that balance of how do I tell a story from the perspective, especially if I'm finding evidence that like, I, like, I am not the one who found this. And I don't think I present myself as the one who did the research, but I think I present it as like, I knew this stuff. So I want to find a way to convey it as like, I have, I have discovered this alongside with you. And anyway, I just, it's, it's a hard balance to find. And something we're doing now is and it's funny, if you watch my videos, you can see our look develop a little bit. Like this is my our old apartment. Like yeah, this is yeah, this is a year ago. Yeah. Dark yeah. background, faking the window light, like all of it. But it, you know, we're we're discovering it as we go. But a process that we are discovering now is using script writing ahead of time and utilizing our really talented writers. We have amazing staff writers at Strong Towns. And so Sierra is an amazing writer of ours and has a real knack for doing research, but also has a real knack for like finding the right people to talk to. So Sierra is writing some scripts that we're exploring like this, this process of writing and doing the research uh, like far in advance to be able to find and pick holes in it as opposed to, me, I don't have a background in research, so I'm finding more easily accessible stuff. Like Sierra is able to find more of the deep cuts and able to find some of the, uh, I think, more compelling evidence. So moving forward, yeah. Uh, and Sierra. a future, exactly. Sierra's awesome. Um, and that story producer line is one we're really excited about as we've struck, restructured just a little bit. As we've seen the momentum of video and its importance for our movement, 
Um, another thing I just love about our organization that we're able to really swiftly like adjust and make changes to, to fit our goals and strategy. This isn't some like huge corporation that has a lot of like fat that can be trimmed and a lot of parts that aren't quite functioning. It's like, we are a really swift movement and we are a really, uh, I mean, you've met a lot of the people who, who are part of our organization at the national gathering. Well, I, and, and what's funny, what's funny, Mike, if I can jump in, what's funny is yeah. I can't even keep up with you guys anymore. I know <laughs> it's, it's like, crazy. <laughs> you guys are hiring so much. Now you had mentioned earlier, and I think it's worth, uh, you know, really emphasizing is it's, it's no longer just the Chuck show. You know, I remember the days when it was just the Chuck show. I, you know, paid him a visit in, in 2013 in Brainerd, uh, to, you know, jump on his podcast and, 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 and kick around, uh, Brainerd a little bit. Um, and so I remember when it was literally just him and maybe one other person kind of helping out there at the Brainerd office, to your point, it's, it's a remote organization and you guys have brought on an amazing mix of people. Uh, you got both the audience can't like feel this, but like as oh. you scroll through and I'm looking at all these faces of my coworkers, it's just like, I am, I'm so inspired by the work we do. It is really like some of the most talented people I know, I'd say the most talented people I know are working at strong towns and it is like every single and there's person. there's Tiffany, there's Tiffany. She was also yep, on the she panel. Is it. Oh, she's, she's it just is. up the road in, in, uh, uh, in Waco, uh, from me. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. But truly yeah. it's, it is amazing that especially, and speaking of like Chuck's mindset, the thing that I've just really been, uh, inspired by and excited about is, like Chuck's excitement at the way the movement is growing too, and our board as well. But there is a real tangible excitement, but there's like, we, we know what we're doing is, is going to change our places. We know that like, say the video I just put out, it's less than 30,000 views, I think at this point, and it, our worst performing one up next to essentially an ad that we put out for, um, for our, our national gathering. But we collectively through all of our posts promoting this, we've gotten like thousands of people reaching the page we want them to hundreds joining, or at least inquiring specifically about joining these local conversations. And as we've seen in all the videos that I've made, like where, especially I go to places like South Bend, the one that's the can American cities save themselves. All it takes is one turning into two or three. Yeah. And then you get entire neighborhoods changing. And yes, it is not going to be the canals and bike, like highways of, or I guess bike infrastructure of the Netherlands. But at the same time, there is a unique flavor of American urbanism that is like blossoming right now that I, I can't like wait for my kids to experience. And I know that's, and some people would be like, that's it. There's the rub. It's like, I might not experience it. Yeah. But like, how cool is it that I, I get to be part of building something and I'm not, I'm not a, on a city council. I am not a city planner. I'm not making the decisions, but what I'm creating, I know is equipping a few people to have the conversations, which conversations can then influence city council elections it's, it's possible and it's not easy. And like, we're facing so many roadblocks in doing it. And that's, it is discouraging. And I think that's important. And I, I want to engage with that, but it can't, we can't stay there. You know, like your podcast is great. Cause I get to see so many of the faces of people who are like doing this work, like Andy, um, a recent one loved getting to meet Andy at the, at the national gathering. He's doing his own great work where he is and all these people And like, sometimes that work is just listening and watching and learning. And then there does reach a point though, where that work becomes creating or that work becomes having the conversations or, you know, wrestling with convictions a bit, you know? Yeah. 
Well, what's interesting too, you brought, brought up Andy, Andy Baino, um, and he was one of my last live streams of 2023. And of course, he he kind of made a bit of a, a major shift. You know, he was a content creator for the better part of the last decade. Most of the time that I've known Andy, he's been uh, blogging and putting stuff out and being a social media influencer. And now he's pulled the trigger and now he's gone to work for the city that he lives in. And so that's one of the things that I think is really important and you just alluded to it is that you're not necessarily the one who's running for city council and rolling up your sleeves and going to work in in city government uh but you're producing content that is inspiring people to you know to roll up their sleeves and get engaged at the community level and 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 really do the hard work and that's what i try to emphasize is i get it i i know that i'm not doing the hard work of the advocates and the city staff members and the and the politicians and the city leaders that are uh, are are you know rolling up their sleeves and and getting down and doing these things, but, but in the same way, we're yeah. creating inspiration. Yes, yeah, and and you, I mean, you you have a content stream that is insane. Like yes, you have a ton I of do. stuff <laughs> going out all the time. It's wild, and I mean like different approaches reach different people. So like our videos coming out less often is more reminiscent of like UT Lee's uh, approach of higher, say higher production quality and hoping to hit like, I guess more virality. Right. As opposed to say the building a community and like, like each of your, what are you at now? Like seven, like 7,000 subs or higher. Y yes, we're just over 8,000 now. Yeah. 8,000. So yes. each of your 8,000 subs was a result of that work and your community is much more like like tight knit, I would say. I I mean, we have a like, you know, much larger like reach as an organization with all of our blogs and our and not blogs, our all, all of our articles starting as a blog, articles, our podcasts, national gathering, all of that. But of that 8,000, you have a like dedicated 8,000. You know what I'm saying? Like your comment sections are much better than our comment sections, which are full of mostly people who find our videos because YouTube knows they're going to hate it. <laughs> right. You know, like yeah. there, there is the work you're doing is, is equipping people to know that they're not alone in this. And as well, your niche specifically of like activity and like fitness as a part of our built environment lends itself really well to this emerging awareness of blue zones, right? So who knows, you know, maybe it, maybe it never pops off to the point that, you know, it's uber viral, but we don't get to see the kind of work that we do. Like when I was teaching and I could, you know, see a student from their freshman year to their senior year, like truly become like the student and learner that I always knew they could be. And some of the kids that like I coached reaching a point where like they are thriving and excelling. Like, yeah, like there's not the personal relationship as much because it is a parasocial relationship through the screen, but it, it is like a very real effect that we get to like nurture and you do a really good job at not just doing the, and our approaches are different. Like, like it came across during our, our panel, you do a very good job of nurturing the relationship more so than I'd say, like I do. I don't have, I take more of Jason's approach where I am kind of cynical toward a lot of the comments, right. but you have a very, like you, you have much more of like the passion for, and, and interest in what is being said. You, like, you see the value in that in a way that I think your audience really respects and appreciates, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and to be quite honest, I don't know that if I were to grow to the size of, of say, you know, Ray's channel with city nerd or Jason's channel with not just bikes, there'd be no way that I think I could really keep up. It would be a full-time job, just kind of keeping up yeah. on, <laughs> on every single comment because right now, while I'm smaller, I am, you know, definitely using, uh, you know, the approach that Ryan Van Duzer uses, who's a good friend of mine out of Boulder. And he tries to answer every single comment and can, and, and, you know, thank every single person that's taken the time to watch and, and that's how you build that dedicated comment. smaller core yeah. which yeah. carries yeah. you because yeah. at the end of the day 
the way the algorithm works right now is it sends your stuff out to that dedicated core right. to see how they react to it to then send it out elsewhere. Yeah. Now I pull, I pulled up the, the most popular again, uh, so that we can kind of see the, the top six, uh, in terms of the number of views. Now, earlier you, you alluded to the fact that things are changing the way that you go about this and the way that you are going to be producing the videos, uh, is going to be a little bit different. And, and you're kind of scratching your head going, wow, that one that I just kind of threw together and then it sort of morphed into this from two months ago is now in the number two spot. It'll probably take the number one spot before too much longer. Talk a little bit about that new process and what we can expect, uh, from the strong towns channel in the future. Yeah. So I, uh, we have a sort of content pause that comes in January where we sort of evaluate how did this year go? What are we going to keep and what are we going to leave? And one thing that I really wanted to do was take some time to look at some of the inspirations that I really want to learn from. And so I followed their Patreons for like a month and I was looking at specifically the team of fault line, which is a, a channel that talks about like geography a channel called The Answer in Progress, which is three friends who just look at questions they're interested in. And the Johnny Harris team. I just, I love his current videos, not as not as much as his, uh, this, the work he did with Vox with the Border series. So I wanted to see the, the process and the structure and I listened to the behind the scenes podcast and I looked at the scripts and I found that the script structure of the Johnny Harris team is one I really wanted to emulate. Starting with a info brief on a subject, taking that, creating an outline, based on that outline, doing the research that needs to be done, taking all of that research and turning that research into a script and finding the narrative there. So we have leveraged, as I mentioned before, the talent of our staff writers to and, and merge that with my skill when it comes to storytelling and videography. And I think we're going to have a nice mix of more stuff that is like our Brattleboro video where I get to do the kind of stuff that I'm, I think I'm really good at when it comes to interviewing and going to a place and filming these mini docs, as well as the, this design, uh, the one that says this was a mistake, the, um, yeah, on this design, yeah, this experiment undid our cities and how do we fix it with way more depth to our research because our stuff is there. I just don't like citing strong towns, you know, like strong towns, citing strong towns. I like, cause within those articles, there's really great stuff, but I really, I think there's so much talent now that's being applied to that research side that will give people so much more evidence to be able to stand on right. when they make these arguments. So I think we're going to be seeing less of say our, the first video I made that is preachy and like just large, like 30,000 foot kind of videos. And we're going to be getting more like into the nitty gritty. So a video that fingers crossed weather permits, I'll be filming later this week is about like street safety and visibility. And I'm going to do some answer in progress style filming where I'm going to film my own little experiment. And I think that's, that's fun. But we also have pages and pages of research that Sierra has done that we're adapting into a script. And so that combination is really exciting. I love it. I love it. I'm very, very excited for what's coming up in the future. I absolutely um, am delighted uh, to have you here on the Active Towns podcast to talk about this and uh, and super, super stoked for you and for the organization that you you found each other. <laughs> it's it's absolutely, uh, it's a, been such a breath of fresh air to see the the style and the, the delivery on it. Um, a, I, I love your style of, of filming. And it's interesting hearing your story about where you came from, from the prankster sort of side of YouTube. And there's none of that in here. I mean, but this, it, you, you are amazing. I love the quick cuts on it. And, uh, and I never felt like you were preaching. 
Um, but I know that that can kind of come off uh, because, you know, ultimately when you're trying to deliver messages, that's there. But what's really, I think, quite appropriate and and, and was very, very evident in the, the most recent one, the Fix It or Move, were those interviews and being able to tell help tell out and tease those personal stories that were part of that. Uh, so I do hope that that continues uh, you know, to be part of the mix uh, as you guys pull together the scripts for the future videos. For sure. <laughs> I'm bummed we talked so much in the beginning about like Mesa and Tempe because we really got to the good stuff at the end. But that's, that's the art. Goes. <laughs> that's the art of of a good podcast though is you find your way to the to the good stuff at the end so man i do think too just moving forward in the youtube space there's so much excitement around this style as well yes someone like flurf designs his video called the disneyfication of american cities i believe it's called is right. approaching five hundred thousand views yeah i mean like Amazing. Studio Leonardo. Rachel has been doing really, really good work and, and she's based out of Spain. Then you have Nick Laporte, I think. Uh, he's he's really engaging in this, you know, micro mobility. Uh, there's a new one, Street Something. Oh, do you know? Oh, I, I need to find it. It's uh, Streetcraft. Okay. Streetcraft. Street yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a really exciting time to be in the YouTube urbanism space. And well, and it's in and, and it's it's YouTube urbanism, yes, but this is like edutainment too. Yes, I mean, this this entire genre is like the exact opposite of the pranking videos and uh, <laughs> and the and the Mr. Beast style videos. I mean, these are very much um, people who are wanting to to learn something and at the same time be entertained a, a fair amount too. Yeah, I people aren't are, the right audience finds us. The people who aren't looking to be entertained by like really quick, like in your face, like boom, 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 boom. I think each of us has our own style that will find different people. And I try to find a nice blend of what will reach new people in a way that a lot of our audience did not like at first. They were like, stop talking. I want to see the studies. And, but for me, I'm like, I want to make these videos in a way that is accessible to like my parents who right. are smart people and are not interested in urbanism, right? Like how do we reach the people who are receptive to new ideas, but also don't have the personal motivation to sit through a super long analysis on like a streetscape. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. how, so that's where our niche is. But then like City Nerd, I personally have a blast listening to Ray's like tone as he as he inserts jokes in a way that you really can't catch unless you're like yeah. paying attention <laughs> and I love just having his videos take me through his entire process of why he chose to leave this stat out and put this one in most people aren't in that camp you know there are 200 whatever number thousand people who are but if we try to be so broadly like I'm going to take that back. I think there is a way that we can be extremely broadly accessible right. and someone's going to do it and they are going to absolutely kill it. And I think Jason has found a way to do it, but like each of us has our own way that we're going to reach different people. And that's, what's exciting is who knows whether like, I really hope like Flurf design keeps it up. Who knows whether that's it. And we end up, you know, having the next million sub urbanist channel and like, in the same way that RM Transit, like, isn't at, say, 2 million subs, but Reese, his audience is perfect as his audience, right? Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes our stuff isn't made for virality, and that's, that's okay. Right. I think we're trying to reach that a little bit at Strong Towns, and that's a tension that is it's tough to navigate but right. we're figuring it out and i'm excited to see where it goes I'm, well like i said i am excited as well and uh it's been an absolute joy and honor having you here on the active towns podcast mike thank you so much john thanks for having me this is great uh will i see you at the national gathering this year i'll be there i'll be there oh, yeah. put, yeah. put, Sweet, put me to work person. guys i, I want to have some fun <laughs> awesome well thanks man it's, it's yeah. been great 
Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you are enjoying this content, please consider supporting my efforts by becoming an Active Towns ambassador. It's easy to do. Just head on over to activetowns.org, click on that support button. And uh, there's several options out there, including becoming a Patreon supporter. Uh, patrons do gain access to all this video content early and ad free. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.